Hello friends, today we're going to look closer to the Nuki keypads. Welcome to this new video. So I got a question from Hamad Rav, who wished to have more information about the Nuki keypad, especially for rental, homes, apartments, etc. So in this video we're going to compare the Nuki keypad 2.0 with the normal keypad and see how it could be beneficial. So first, let's see the differences between this keypad 2.0 and the normal keypad. So the difference is that on the normal keypad, which is a little bit smaller, you can enter up to 100 codes. On the 2.0, you can enter 200 codes and 20 unique fingerprints. The normal keypad works with the very first new key up to the newest one, of course, the keypad 2.0 only works from the Nuki 2.0 for installation the normal keypad can be glued or screwed this one the 2.0 can only be glued onto your door so if you would wonder about theft don't worry Nuki offers you a free replacement if of course you can give them your original receipt together with the loss report issued by your local police office and then for the battery life, the normal keypad holds up batteries for 18 months. The 2.0 holds up batteries for 12 months, so one year. And then the main difference, of course, is the normal keypad goes for 79 euros and the 2.0 costs 159 euros. So my personal thoughts about this is that the 2.0 is especially good for home use where you can set the fingerprints of all the family members for professional use for airbnb jeet and rental homes i think the fingerprint isn't that much of a greater value and you especially will work with codes so i think it will be better to use than the normal keypad then so before we dive into how you can use the keypad for rental homes you should know that Nuki also offers a thing that they call smart hosting and this is especially for everything like Airbnb, Smoobu, Smiley etc and they offer here an automated access management so with an API you can connect those applications together with your Nuki setup and for an additional 69 euros a year per smart lock the access management will be completely automated and they even offer you the first year for free. So this said, of course, you can also do this manually, especially if you only have one rental home and it isn't that a big deal to create new codes. So of course, the big advantage is that you don't have to be on site to hand over a pair of keys. There's no risk of losing keys or people that forget to leave the keys behind and they return back home with your set of keys. And the other big advantage is that you can set up the codes for specific time frames and beside to this really specific entry codes you can also leave an entry code for the home cleaning that will always be accessible or that only will be accessible on certain days or certain periods of time so before i show how to create those access codes and set those time frames what do you need in order to use this nuki setup well of course you need a nuki smart lock you can go for the Nuki 3.0 with a bridge that comes together for 268 euros and then you have to add this keypad as well that comes for 79 euros so your starter kit will cost a total of 347 euros you could also opt to go for the Nuki 3.0 Pro this way you don't have to buy an additional bridge and you also have the integrated power pack and it costs only 11 euros more so personally i would go directly for the new key 3.0 pro this way you have and your bridge integrated and a power pack as well why you need a bridge of course the keypad works without the internet connection because it connects through bluetooth directly to your new key but you want to have an access on distance when you're not on the local wi-fi network so and here for you need a bridge so or you buy the the separate bridge or you buy the Nuki 3.0 Pro who has the built-in bridge. So now let's see how to create those access codes. So to create the access code we go to the Nuki application then you click 
on the Nuki Smart Lock, configuration, keypad, and here you can see your settings. I can see that my battery is still enough charged, what kind of batteries I'm using, the firmware, the brightness of the LED, etc. So now here I can see the access rights. Of course, I will hide the actual codes. So the most difficult thing about the keypad, I would say, is that it doesn't have a zero. So when you have to create a code, you will discover that most of our easy to remember codes contain zeros. So you have to use another way to create codes that you can easily remember. Of course, useless to say that that you have to avoid codes like 1111 or 222 or 123456. Up to you, you could also use a password generator to create codes for you, especially if you're creating codes on regular basis for rental solutions. So as I have the keypad 2.0, I have the access code and a fingerprint, but you can define the access code separately from the fingerprint. So now let's set a new access code. So just create for this example a really easy code. I click next. So here you can define the time limits. So let's say that I will rent my apartment for one week and the guests only will have access to my apartment from Saturday at 2 p.m. and they will have to give back my apartment the Saturday after and they have to leave the apartment at let's say 11 a.m. So this way I can set the special access for my guests And there you go. Here you see my access code. Let's give it a name, guest one. So here you can see my guest one, the code, and I can see the time frame. So let's say that they have a little problem and they had to have to have access one hour more. I can easily give them one hour more access and there you go now let's say that I have to give access to the house cleaning as well let's create a new code next housekeeper and let's say that they will have access every every Saturday to clean up after the last guests and they have access from 11 o'clock let's say and they have access until midnight And there you go. I can see there's a little bug because it doesn't remember the name I give. So let's give the name again, housekeeper. And there you go. So you can set up to 100 codes for the normal keypad and even up to 200 codes for the keypad 2.0. So now let's remove these accesses and remove the guest as well. So really easy to use access management. And let's say that you have only one apartment and then you have people that keep returning from time to time. You can give them the same code, but still define the specific period 
where they will have access. So they won't be able to access your apartment or your rental house when you don't want to. So the, another advantage, of course, is you can see the use of the keypad. You can always lock the door from a distance if the people didn't do so. And in the logs, I can easily see what happened at what time. So let's see a little bit further. Here, for instance, Wednesday in the morning at 8.47, there was an unknown fingerprint used, and this is because it was raining, and when there's a little bit of water on the keypad, it has more difficulty to recognize your fingerprint. So just one minute after, I used my normal access code to unlock the door. Just a little bit earlier, at 7 o'clock 12, you can see that my son unlocked the door with his access code you can see that he also had problems with his fingerprint as i can see and at midnight i think he went out the night before you can see that he unlocked the door with his fingerprint so a really detailed log in order to follow up your rental apartment so let me know in the comments what you think about the nuki smart locks and the keypad and how you could use them for your rental homes don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye bye.